Dia de su... Que Dios lo acoja ahora en la plenitud de su amor y lo lleve a la vida eterna. Amen. Our entrance hymn, as found in the program, is Amazing Grace, sung in English and Spanish. Oremos, Señor Dios nuestro, tú que eres perdón de los pecadores y felicidad de tus santos, concede a tu siervo, Jason, a quien vamos a dar hoy piedoso sepultura, formar parte del número de tus elegidos, para que libre ya de los lazos de la muerte, el día de la resurrección pueda contemplar tu rostro. Que nuestro Señor Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, y es Dios por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? 
will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword. No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Put an end to my affliction and my suffering and take away all my sin. To you shall live with him, and if we are faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. El Señor esté con ustedes. Lectura del Santo Evangelio según San Juan. En aquel tiempo, cuando llegó María, la hermana de Lázaro, a donde estaba Jesús, al verlo, se echó a sus pies y le dijo, Señor, si hubieras estado aquí, no habría muerto mi hermano. 
Jesús al verlo, verla llorar y al ver llorar a los judíos que la acompañaban, se conmovió hasta lo más hondo y preguntó, ¿dónde lo han puesto? Le contestaron, ven Señor y lo verás. Jesús se puso a llorar y los judíos comentaban, de veras, cuánto lo amaba. Algunos decían, ¿no podía este que abrió los ojos al ciego de nacimiento hacer que Lázaro no muriera? Jesús, profundamente conmovido todavía, se detuvo ante el sepulcro, que era una cueva sellada con una losa. Entonces dijo Jesús, quiten la losa. Pero Marta, la hermana del que habría muerto, le replicó, Señor, ya huele mal, ¿por qué lleva cuatro días? Le dijo Jesús, ¿no te he dicho que si crees, verás la gloria de Dios? Entonces quitaron la piedra. Jesús levantó los ojos a lo alto y dijo, Padre, te doy gracias porque me has escuchado. Yo ya sabía que tú siempre me escuchas, pero lo he dicho a causa de esta muchedumbre que me rodea, para que crean que tú me has enviado. Luego gritó con voz potente, Lázaro, sal de ahí. Y salió el muerto, atados con vendas, las manos y los pies, y la cara envuelta en un sudario. Jesús les dijo, desátenlo, para que pueda andar. Muchos de los judíos que habían ido a casa de Marta y María a ver lo que había hecho Jesús, creyeron en Él. Palabra del Señor. Gloria a ti, Señor Jesús. Daniel, Diana, Jeffrey, María, Dominique. Nuestros pensamientos están con ustedes hoy. También nuestras oraciones para ustedes. Porque sabemos que quizás este día es el más difícil de todas sus vidas. Estamos con nosotros, con ustedes hoy. Como familia, como iglesia. Relatives. And friends, and Jason's NYPD brothers and sisters, and to all who have gathered here today to pray for our brother and to honor his life, may the peace and the love of God be with you. In his first letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul, referencing the book of the prophet Isaiah, says, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, oh, death, is your sting? ¿Dónde está la victoria tuya, la muerte? I believe, my brothers and sisters, we have an answer for St. Paul. It's right here. The sting of death is here as we mourn the loss of our brother because death surely does sting, especially when a young person's life is cut short so tragically, just at the beginning of his career, just at the beginning of his marriage, just at the beginning of realizing a childhood dream. It surely seems, it seems that death has the victory. But my brother, my sisters, the sting of death and what appears to be death's victory is not what brought us to this magnificent house of God today. Joined together in prayer with our shepherd, Cardinal Dolan, with priests and bishops, with faithful men and women, our elected and appointed officials of this great city, people of all faiths, of all religious traditions, 
fellow police officers from around the country and indeed from around the world. No, it is not the sting of death, it is not the victory of death that brings us here, it is faith that brings us here today. Es la fe que nos ha llevado aquí a la iglesia, esta catedral tan sagrado en los ojos de la iglesia, tan sagrado en los ojos de Dios. And it is our trust, nuestra confianza, en la promesa de Dios estar con nosotros, acompañarnos en la jornada de vida y de fe, por la vida, por la muerte, hasta la vida eterna. Con fe nos hemos reunido hoy aquí en la Catedral de San Patricio. My brothers and my sisters, since last Friday, we have been trying to make sense of the death of our brother Jason, and subsequently the death of his partner, police officer Wilbert Mora. Truth be told, we still haven't made sense of their deaths. And what, when what is human and fragile, when what is temporal and limited escapes reason and explanation and understanding and leaves us feeling empty and angry and sad defeated and without meaning, we surely know where to turn to the loving mercy and compassion of our God, to our loving faith community, to our belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his promise that even in death we shall live and everyone who lives and believes in him shall never die. That's what brought us here today and it's with those words that we honor our brother Jason. Our first reading this morning from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans begins with a question that surely may have crossed the minds of his listeners in his own day and may have from time to time crossed our minds as well. If God is for us, and he is, who can be against us? Who can ever come between us and the love of Christ? Si Dios está a nuestro favor, ¿quién estará en contra nuestra? ¿Qué cosa podrá apartarnos del amor que, que nos ama Cristo? No hay nada, ni la muerte, no hay nadie que puede separarnos del amor de Dios que es nuestro en Cristo Jesús. Paul tells the community in Rome not to be afraid, not to be discouraged. Even in the face of persecution, there is nothing that could separate them, not even death itself, from the love of God. God has given us a promise of eternal life. And even in the midst of great struggles, persecution, and for some death itself, Paul encourages the community, remain strong and be united, support and strengthen one another. Doesn't that sound familiar to us? Doesn't that look familiar to us? As men, Women of faith, we're here to find consolation, here to support and strengthen one another, especially Jason's family, as we offer our prayers and intercession for them and for him. Listen again to Paul's words. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor present things nor future things nor powers nor height nor death, nor any other creature, not violence, not hatred, not murder, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our brother, Jason Rivera. Police officer, Jason Rivera, is not separated from the love of God. Nuestro hermano, Jason, no está separado del amor de Dios. Rather, he will live in the loving embrace of God for all eternity. For all eternity. While we struggle with his separation from us, and this is a struggle, we turn to God. We turn to God in our grief, perhaps our unanswered questions, maybe even with doubts, and we pray 
for the comfort and strength we need to get through this hour, this hour of struggle. My brothers and sisters, let us draw that comfort. Let us draw that strength from the knowledge of God's love for each and every one of us. Todos nosotros somos hijos e hijas de Dios. Muy amados por nuestro Dios Padre. Let us find comfort in the love we have for one another, in the love that God has for Jason, and the love that we have found for him and he for us. In our gospel passage from John, Jesus, his friend Lazarus, has died. And his sisters Martha and Mary, also friends of Jesus, are mourning the death of their brother. La muerte de Lázaro, su hermano, pesa mucho. Y por eso ellas nos entienden. Jesus, too, is saddened by the death of Lazarus. And the scriptures tell us Jesus wept. He didn't shed a tear. His eyes didn't get watery. Jesus wept from deep within. So he knows Jesús entiende nuestras lágrimas, nuestra, nuestro pesar por la muerte de un ser querido, hijo, esposo, hermano, primo, amigo. Jesús entiende. He also wants to help you carry this heavy cross and the pain and the brokenness that has brought you. He wants you to know that you are not alone. Dios quiere que ustedes sepan que el amor de Dios está con ustedes ahora y cada día en adelante. Jesus goes to that tomb of Lazarus despite that stench of death. And with confidence and trust, he raises his eyes to heaven and he prays. And then he called Lazarus from the tomb. Lázaro, sal, sal de ahí. And the dead man comes out. My brothers and my sisters, Lazarus would eventually die again. Unlike Lazarus, our brother Jason will never have to die again. No hay más peligros. No hay más heridas. There are no more threats to our brother. Only the fullness of peace and glory in the presence of God. A number of years ago, I served as vocation director, recruiter for our Capuchin province of St. Mary, and our slogan was, live the dream make the difference. And I thought about it. I thought about Jason. I remembered that slogan because this young man embodied it. We know that from a young age, he wanted to be a police officer. And he wanted to make a difference in the lives of those who would be sworn to protect and to serve. And to make a difference in the life of our community, a difference in the lives of his fellow officers. He lived his dream, although too short a time. And he made a difference. And we pray that he will continue to make a difference in the lives of others who will remember him fondly, not just today, whose smile, now only visible in pictures and in our memories, will continue to make us smile, will inspire others to be their very best will remind all of us to enjoy life and to be grateful for this great gift from God. All of us have taken this tragedy very personally. We've seen all the tributes, the candlelight vigil services, the news coverage, the outpouring of care and concern from folks all around the country. He has been hailed a hero, but not a recognition, not an ambition that I believe Jason sought after. He was a police officer, a public servant, 
who did his job. He put others first as he responded to that 9-11 call, just as he did for so many others in his short time with the New York Police Department. He is remembered as a hard worker, even from an early age. A respectful, a good kid in the neighborhood. A loving son who wanted to make his parents proud. Ustedes pueden ser bien orgulloso de su hijo, de tu hermano, Jeffrey, tu esposo. He was a brother and a friend. As we waited to celebrate Jeffrey and Maria's wedding a few years ago, Jason asked me, if he could lead us in prayer in the sacristy. He had all of us in tears as he prayed for his brother and his future sister-in-law's happiness in marriage in the sacrament. Jeffrey, you took care of Tata when he was younger. Now it's his turn to take care of you from his place in heaven in a way he could not do on earth. Dominique, your marriage to Jason, like his life, was far too short. We know he loved you. We know he cared so much for you, his childhood sweetheart. You made him happy. You made him smile. Anna, Daniel, estoy pensando en la Virgen María, abrazando a Cristo, su Hijo, llenos de amor, llenos de esperanza, llenos de fe. No hay palabras que yo puedo usar para sacar de ustedes el dolor de su muerte. Pero por eso Los prometo las oraciones de nosotros aquí presente hoy y mañana y semana tras semana más tras más mes. Jesus' life was also cut short. Jesus died a violent death on the cross. But he did not die in vain. Death did not have the final word. And that's why we're here today. Jason did not die in vain. No murió en vano su hijo. And death does not have the final word this time either. Jason dedicó su vida, como toda la policía, al servicio de otros. And the Lord, too, knew what it meant to protect and serve others. But Jesus had no precinct. He traveled from town to town, proclaiming the good news to anyone who would listen. He had no uniform, only the garment of God's love and mercy. He wore no shield on his chest, but had a heart open to all. He never went to a roll call he only took his directives from his father while in prayer. And he never used lights or sirens, but everyone knew when Jesus was in town. All of the stories you've heard, all of the memories you share, all the love that's been shown you these days will, with the assurances of faith from this community, be a source of comfort and peace for you. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Jason, hermano, descanse en paz.
Oremos. Let us pray. In baptism, Jason received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Jason was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant to them, and especially to Officer Wilbert Mora, an everlasting home with your son, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of the New York Police Department and their families, that the Lord may grant them fortitude, prudence, courage, strength, and serenity of heart as they fulfill their mission, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and well-being of the people of New York City and all visitors to the five boroughs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We seek the intercession of Mary, our sorrowful mother, the mother of Jesus, there at the foot of the cross, of St. Patrick, our patron, and of St. Michael the Archangel, the patron of the police, as we make our prayers as ever through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to join in singing the offertory hymn found in the program, Lord of All Hopefulness. my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of your name, for our good and the cause of public change. A 
Recuerde, Señor, en ayuda de tu hijo Jason, por quien te ofrecemos este sacrificio de reconciliación en el día de su sepultura, para que se cueda en alguna mancha de pecado o alguna imperfección de la debilidad humana, por el don de tu misericordia, lo perdones y lo purifiques por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, the hosts and powers of heaven, we now sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Acuérdate, Señor, de tu iglesia extendida por toda la tierra, y con el Papa Francisco, con nuestro obispo Timoteo y todos los pastores, 
que cuiden de tu pueblo, llévala a su perfección por la caridad. Recuerda a tu hijo Jason, a quien llamaste de este mundo a tu presencia. Concédele que, así como ha compartido ya la muerte de Jesucristo, comparta también con él la gloria de la resurrección. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we <coughs> those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
we invite you to join in singing the communion hymn found in the program, Yo Soy El Pan de Vida.
Oremos. Let us pray. Señor Dios Todopoderoso, concede que tu hijo, Jason, a quien llamaste hoy de este mundo, sea purificado de sus pecados por este sacrificio y reciba el gozo eterno de la resurrección por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. At this time, I'd like to invite the mayor of the city of New York, the Honorable Eric Adams, to come forward. Thank you, Cardinal Dolan. Today, we salute police officer Jason Rivera for the last time. His journey by our side has ended. He takes another path. He can still hear us from a distance. He hears our voices, he hears our prayers, he hears our hopes. We as a city, as a state, and as a nation, we say thank you, Jason. Today our hearts are with his beautiful family. I still remember watching them in the hospital and just feeling the pain that moved throughout the entire hospital as not only the police officers, but the staffs, the doctors, the people in the community felt the pain as we all mourned his loss. And a special prayer for his wonderful wife, Dominique, high school sweethearts, love at first sight, just watching her as she was engulfed in the pain of losing her husband. Only married for a few months, October 9th, 2021, it was clear the love was present as she walked inside the hospital and I saw just the collapse of emotion of losing her husband to senseless violence. And to her parents, Anna and Daniel, all they ask is just for justice for their son justice for the children of the city. Parents wanted what every parent desires. I say to you, we're sorry. We're sorry. And Jason was the first person in his family to become a police officer. As I thought about him, I could not help but to reflect on my life disappointed in my observation, but watching the desire of the police department to build new bridges, he decided to go inside and help from within. And he was committed to that desire. And he did it for the right reasons. He wanted to make a difference. He wanted to become a police officer. And also thought about Jeffrey 
what it means to be a big brother, Jeffrey. All you want is the best for your baby brother. You spend your entire life trying to protect them from harm and feel hopeless when something devastating happens. And we have a tendency to blame ourselves when that, hap when that happens. Please don't do that. Your brother was a hero, and he understood the bonds of brotherhood and what it means to be a brother and how painful this parting is for you. And I remember looking at your face and thinking about Bernard, my baby brother. And all I can say to you is that you have physically lost your brother, but you have gained me as your brother. And I thank you for what you have done to have this wonderful human being become a member of the New York City Police Department and how you guided him throughout his life. You did your job so he can do his job. Jason was fortunate enough to also have a wonderful extended family. Dominique's parents, Liliana and Jimmy, and their children, his siblings-in-law. The entire Dominican community, as well as the entire city of New York, is in mourning, but it also lifts up our acknowledgement of how much first-generation New Yorkers play a vital role in the fabric of this city. He was a first-generation New Yorker, son of immigrants, example how we can come together as a city. He's a hero, and our fellow New Yorkers acknowledge that. And we grieve for all of them, as well as his family. And with the family of his fallen partner, Officer Wilbert Mora, our hearts go out to his family. But also want to speak to my men and women that wear and adorn the uniform every day. Once a cop, is always a cop. It never goes away. Every retired member inside this church and in this city feels the pain. I think about Glenn Martin, the husband of my longtime chief advisor, Ingrid Martin. He gave me a picture of his son that I hung in my locker every day as a rookie cop and throughout my 22-year career. And I was afraid that one day I will have to tell his family that he was not coming home. And it concerned me. And there were days when I thought the public did not understand and appreciate the job we were doing. And I want to tell to you officers, they do, they do. Don't ever give up on the people of this city because they will never give up on you. And every day when I see New Yorkers, they say thank the men and women of the New York City Police Department. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for what you do every day. You stand in the gap of safety. And these two fine men watered the tree of safety that allows us to sit under its shade from the hot sun of violence. You play a vital role in the prosperity of this city. And today is a morning for all of you. The tragic death of your brother in blue uniform is a stark reminder what is on the line every day. And I'm here sitting next to the governor of the state of New York, and Senator Chuck Schumer, and other electeds. We are committed to giving you the resource to do your jobs and ensure that we can keep the people of this city safe. It takes courage to put on a uniform and a badge to answer the call 
to serve the cause of justice in every sense of the word. Cardinal Dolan, this is a biblical moment. Scripture, scripture states, greater love have no one than this, that a man had lay down his life for his friends. That is what Jason did. He gave his life defending his fellow New Yorkers. That greater love unites us here today, standing side by side. There has been a tremendous amount of sadness and grief in our city. But as I travel, I see something special about New York. Inside the crevices of violence is uncertainty in COVID. Inside the uncertainty of what tomorrows are alike. I see love and hope and opportunity. We are New Yorkers. I believe in this city with all my heart. And I know what we are capable of doing as we lift up this family and the families who are experiencing and feeling this violence. We care about each other. That's what makes this city possible, along with the courage of officer like Jason Rivera. The hearts of 8.8 .8 million people are reaching out and mourning today. And we will ensure everything within our powers to not lose our family members through this senseless violence. I cannot thank you enough for your contribution. And although your loved one has taken a physical transformation into the spiritual realm, we know he's always with us, and this city will become a better place because of his sacrifice. God bless New York. God bless the New York City Police Department. God bless America. I'd now like to invite up the police commissioner of the city of New York, the Honorable Keyshawn Sewell. Your Eminence, Cardinal Dolan and members of the clergy, Mayor Adams, Dominique, Danielle, Anna, Jeffrey, Jason's extended family and friends, members of the 3-2 Precinct and Jason's Police Academy Company 2062, residents of Harlem, Washington Heights, Inwood, all of our communities, and everyone touched so deeply by Jason's life as well as his passing. En nombre del Departamento de Policía en Nueva York, que él amó y por él que dio su vida, les expreso mis más profundas condolencias. This has always been a city of lights, and police officer Jason Rivera was one of its brightest. His family was sure to tell us that his nickname was Tata, but that changed. His nickname became Jason, and Tata was his real name. In neighborhoods across this city, Tata is being remembered in lights. Many are blue to show overwhelming support. Thousands are candles held at vigils, placed outside of his precinct, his home, and in the place where he and police officer Wilbert Mora answered their final call for service to do a job that everyone knew was all he ever wanted to do. His father, Danielle, said that it was far too many times that when he was a police officer, he worked late. 
And every night, his mother, Anna, would stand and look out her front living room window, worrying and watching as Jason found a parking space. She'd then stay in the window and turn on her cell phone flashlight to wave at him in the window until Jason would turn his on and wave back. She was there every time. Her light would lead him home. By all accounts, Jason was wise beyond his years. His level of maturity at such a young age was noted repeatedly by his colleagues who remember how much they learned by simply being around him, working side by side. He cherished the company of his colleagues, his brothers and sisters in blue. But wisdom is a process. According to his brother Jeffrey, when Jason was a child, he played multiple sports and he wholeheartedly loved the New York Mets because he didn't know any better. <laughs> he said when Jason began to grow up and realize that he wanted to be successful, he became a Yankees fan. <laughs> the son of an immigrant, he acutely observed a need in his community. He knew that decisions and changes are made by those who show up, so he suited up. With an unrelenting instinct to help others, Jason did everything he had to do to join the New York City Police Department. It was a star to catch, a goal to score. It was the same with his wife, Dominique. He adored her since they were children. She was the inextinguishable light in his life. In only 22 years, Jason found the woman and the career of his dreams. Many don't accomplish that in their entire lifetimes. He was a man of unbounded generosity, humble of heart, he showed us how to be better. His selfless acts of humility have been remembered over the past week. The 3-2 precinct has been flooded with calls, visits, and a tremendous amount of outpouring support from the community, both near and far. His loss is extremely difficult for us all to bear. Jason rose to every challenge that crossed his path. He was everything the city and the NYPD needed him to be. And it is with sincere admiration and appreciation that I promote him today to Detective First Grade. We may not match the sacrifice made by Jason, but we can try to match his incredible sense of service. We may not match his courage, but we can try to match his passion. As a city and as a police department, we owe all these things to Jason, Rivera, and Wilbert Mora. We owe it to their families for their sacrifice. The horror that took their lives is an affront to every decent, caring human being in this city and beyond. Their assassinations, the dousing of Jason's thousand watt smile that lifted the spirits of those fortunate enough to know him, shocks sensibilities and leads others to despair. The criminals in this city who would victimize and instill fear in innocent people who would seek to harm any police officer and rip away two promising protectors, sons, brothers, and a husband from their families and friends. Those who seek to dim the beacons of hope across these five boroughs look outside, hear our voices, see the presence in this cathedral. The NYPD will never give up this city. We will always prevail.
We prevail because we stay united and strong. And it is because the spirit of Tata is in the bones of every single police officer. It's in the hearts of his family. It's in the mountain of sympathy and support of countless New Yorkers across this city and people all over the world. Jason's light will shine on. Senora Rivera, we can never replace Tata's light that he waved to you at night. But there's a glowing wave of blue outside, of gray, of brown and green, a mosaic of men and women in uniform with the shine of tears in their eyes and a glint of daylight on their shields. As the turret lights escort your family, they honor our brother today. Know that they will forever beam in salute to the son you gave in service to this city. It is the light that never fails. And the truly finest members of the 3-2 and the entire NYPD will proudly carry on the extraordinary legacy of Detective First Grade, Jason Rivera. Familia Rivera, los amamos y seremos su familia para el resto de la vida. Gracias. I'd like now to invite Inspector Amir Yakatali to please come forward. To all in attendance today, friends, colleagues from both near and far, community leaders and neighbors, we thank you for being here during this time of great loss and anguish. As we honor our fallen brother and friend, Jason Rivera. As you can imagine, we at the 32nd Precinct are in tremendous pain. Many people don't realize and can't comprehend just how strong the bonds are between those in our profession. There's something different when it comes to cops. We don't always talk about it. We may not often express it day to day, but it's there. These connections and relationships, they run deep. They go down to the core. We do things for each other because we're a family. As much or more so than those related by blood. It is for this reason and so many others that losses like this one has brought us here today. It's something we struggle immensely to cope with. Those who come on this job, we don't do it for money or prestige, but out of a pledge we've made, our sworn duty. Our goal when we accept the great responsibility of both the badge and the gun is to assist those we serve in the best way possible, to do so every day and with every interaction. We realize and accept the fact that we're not guaranteed to be 100% safe on every job as we can't control every situation. But we do what we can and take on the countless risks in any given encounter. Risks that most people will not see or know 
or need to experience during their lifetime. If we were to allow that fear to control us, we would never leave the station house. We would never fulfill our oath to serve and protect. And so each day, in our promise to fulfill this oath, while acknowledging the dangers of this job, we tell each other to stay safe, get through the tour, go home to your family. Then we walk out that door and into the unknown. This is precisely what Jason Rivera did. Every day he donned a uniform and went out to patrol in Harlem. This is what Jason did on that dreadful day he was taken from us. He went out into the unknown. On that day, two of our best were taken from us. And the third, Sumit Tulan, while fighting for his brothers, was forced to make a life or death decision, a decision that no one wants to make. They walked down the hallway with the goal of mediation. They walked down that hallway into an unknown that stole Jason's smile and robbed him of a promising future. The three two then ran into that building also into the unknown, never expecting to find their brothers fallen. Yet they sprang into action, not skipping a beat, doing everything they could to save our heroes. I'm so proud of you all. And I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry you have to suffer this day and the days to come. But I'm even prouder when you tell me, after all you've been through, that you can't wait to get back out there and show Jason that his bravery will be honored. Jason. To know Jason is to admire him. <laughs> to know Jason is to respect him. To know Jason is to love him. You see, Jason saw the need and had the desire to foster a positive relationship between police and his community. He wanted to be the change that he wanted to see in the world. And so back in November of 2020, he began his career in, in the middle of both a COVID pandemic and continued civil unrest in the city. These events would soon would be enough to deter many potential candidates for the job and force a number of service members into retirement. But not Jason. He was just beginning. He worked his way through the academy, and six months later, he was assigned to the 32nd Precinct in Harlem. From day one, he showed his enthusiasm and love for this job. So eager was he to start that first day that he double parked right in front of the precinct on 135th Street. First day. Brought traffic to a complete standstill leaving the desk sergeant desperately trying to figure out whose car it was. Traffic jam was causing everything. But even so, supervisors in the precinct were immediately paying attention to him and predicting he would do well, so long as he respected the parking rules. Although he lived about 10 to 15 minutes away, Jason would come to work early every day, a reflection of the sentiment his brother Jeffrey expressed to me regarding how much Jason loved his job and the command. Jason's wife, Dominique, expressed a little different perspective, though, informing me that Jason used to run to work because he was afraid of the assistant ICO would be at roll call, and he didn't want to get a CD for being late. When actually told one day that he might be getting a CD regarding a minor situation, Jason approached the desk, sported his biggest smile, and asked, hey, Lou, am I getting a CD? Needless to say, he didn't get one. Since that first day, Jason will get excited about, the, about all the other firsts on the job, getting his park, first parking permit, his first police-issued metro card, his first arrest. Each new assignment brought excitement and anticipation, well, except station house security, which I later found out was his, was his least favorite assignment. That simply was because Jason wanted to be out there really doing the job and interacting with the public. 
He would volunteer for any assignment and step up and take the dirtiest jobs and most dis difficult tasks given just for the chance to learn and serve. He took his job in earnest as he took his life in general. And he knew what he wanted and strived to get it. Jason's fellow officers describe him as funny with an infectious personality and smile. Born on the street, he was focused and showed a maturity beyond his 22 years. Jason had that focus in every facet of his life. Whether it was trying to guide his fellow classmates through motivational speeches in school, marrying his childhood sweetheart, or buying a home where he intended to raise his family. He was proud of his Dominican heritage, of his city. He was a sports enthusiast, a man of faith. He was what we all want in a cop. And he was all we could ask for. As a son, brother, and husband, he was even more. To Anna, Danielle, Jeffrey, and Dominique, please know we're here for you to lean on, both now and in the years to come. Although we are hurting, we know our, pale, our pain pales in, your com in comparison to yours. We are part of your family, as you are part of ours. Know that Jason represents healing and a better future. And he brought to policing the change many of us have been asking for. His dedication was shown through his actions and his infectious smile. A smile that brightened my day whenever I saw him. A smile that captivated us and made him relatable. A smile that showed his pride to be an NYPD officer. And so I say to our brothers and sisters in the NYPD, as we put on our uniforms and prepare to venture beyond those station house steps to the unknown, I ask that you look in the mirror first and reflect on Jason's vision. As you go through the trials of the day, keep Jason's memory and vision alive through your actions. Even if it's just a smile, smile as often as you can so Anna, Danielle, Jeffrey, and Dominique can see the impact he's had on us all. We will keep his memory alive and ensure his sacrifice and that of his partner, Wilbert, will never be forgotten. Rest in eternal peace, Jason. Your watch has ended. Your duty fulfilled. Our good and faithful servant. Thank you. I'd now like to invite the president of the Police Benevolent Association, Police Officer Patrick Lynch. You know, as we um, we sit in this cathedral today and we pray to Jesus and we ask for the intercession of the Blessed Mother and St. Michael and St. Patrick to give us the strength to get through this time that we don't think we can to help a family that's grieving and that grief will never go away. And as we sit in these pews and we think, we're going to think about how he was a hero police officer. We're going to think about how he died a hero. We're going to think about how he went to that call and he gave his life. We're going to think about how he gave his life for others. We're going to think about how he tried to speak to someone that didn't want to be spoken to, but he tried anyway. And we know he's a hero. But in reality, as we sit here today and we hear the speakers and we speak to this family, we now know he's not a hero because of the way he died. He's a hero because of the way he lived. He's a hero 
not because he had a shield in his pocket, but he had a shield in his soul. He watched every show, live, t live PD, cops. He watched it all. That's all he wanted to do. All he wanted to do was go out in the streets and tell people how we can do better, talk about his culture, say how he wanted to be a cop, and then he became that cop. How we can do better. How we can change the world. And then when we look at his family and we look at how he lived, we know it didn't happen by magic. It was taught and it was learned and it was in his soul at his own kitchen table. How he cared for his parents and he took care of them as his brother told us. How he chose his bride and loved you literally for his entire life. So yes, he's a hero for the way he died, but more importantly, he's a hero. He's a hero for the way he died, but he's a hero for the way he lived each and every day. So now it's our turn to help him and continue to change the world. And I'm a work in progress, Cardinal. And at times I doubt, but now I have the faith. If he can think he can change the world, well then we're going to change the world with him and for him. His uh, love for his family His love for his family was so strong, I was so honored to be welcomed into your home. Today, as I'm sitting here waiting for this hero send-off to begin, I'm told a story of how our hero police officer, yes, the way he lived, our hero police officer recently sold that car. He started taking the bus to work and he sold that car because he wanted to live the American dream. He wanted to save every penny he can to make your home better, to buy that next home. That's a hero. Yes, a hero for the way he lived. So I want to thank you for sharing him with us. And I believe that we can change the world. And I believe that every police officer here will do it. And remember the smile that's here. Yes, the way he loved you. Yes, he, the way he loved his wife, his family, his parents loved you and loved the three too. This is going to be difficult. And it's going to get much worse before it gets better. In my uh, parish on Sunday, there's a hymn that we sing. And it says, I go before you always, come follow me. And I believe that. I believe Jesus goes before us. But I believe I can speak for the thousands upon thousands of New York City police officers, police officers from around the country, people that have come here to show love, to show respect, to show honor. I think I can speak for those police officers who stand patch to patch. Yes, Jesus goes before you but we're all right behind you. Our next speaker will be uh, Jason's older brother, Jeffrey. My little brother, my little brother, police officer, 
Jason Rivera. My little brother, Jason Rivera, a.k.a. Tata. A.k.a. Tata. Tata. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't know who Jason is. That's Tata for us. Tata for life. My little brother, Tata. And my wife, she would always, she would always tease me. She would always tease me. She would say, why do you call him your little brother? Why do you call him your little brother? He's bigger than you. And he was bigger than me. He had a lot more facial hair than me. He could probably beat me up. It is what it is. But when I looked at him, I never saw, I never saw the man that you saw. Never, I never saw the man that you saw. I saw my baby. I saw my baby brother. I saw 10-year-old Tata, that's who I saw. I didn't see police officer Jason Rivera. That was my baby, my baby. Everyone likes to say, everyone keeps telling me over and over and over again, oh, you have such, such a big influence on your brother. Everything that he did, everything. He would come to me, he would ask me for his opinion on all of his decisions, everything, everything, everything. And that was true, that was true. Everything that he did, he always wanted my opinion on it. But, but, no matter how much I begged my brother, no matter how much I begged him to not become a police officer, I had no influence on that. No influence. No influence. There was nothing, nothing, nothing that I could say, that my mother could say to take that, that burning desire that he had inside of him to become a police officer, to wear, that un to wear that uniform and get that badge. Nothing, nothing. My brother's first love, my brother's first love was policing. That was his first love. As a kid, as a baby, as a kid growing up, if you had something that you had to watch on TV, and Cops was on, Live PD, or Chicago PD, good luck. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. If you had something you had to watch and those shows were on, forget about it. And he would stay, he would lay on his couch listening to the Citizens app, listening to the radio transmission. I'm like, yo, what are you doing, bro? He would just lay there just listening to the radio transmissions. He would wake up in the middle of the night policing. I'm not exaggerating. He would literally wake up in the middle of the night policing. He was obsessed. He was obsessed with his career in law enforcement. And I want you guys to never, ever, ever forget that. He was obsessed with what he did. I remember maybe like in the second or third grade, maybe fourth, he had a big, big crush on Dominic. He had a crush on Dominic. I don't know if if Dominic knows that, but he had a crush on Dominic since they were babies. And maybe around the age of 12 or 13, he expressed that deep, serious adult love to her. He was so sure he knew everything about love. My man was ready, my man was a player. He had game, little brother had game. But that was my brother, you know, he, he, was so, he was so ahead of his time, so ahead of his time. He knew, there was only two things he knew for certain since he was a baby. He knew what he wanted to do for the rest of his life and he knew who he wanted to be with for the rest of his life. Those were the only two things he knew.
my baby brother, Tata, he, he was the definition of dedication. He was the definition of hard work. My brother loved working. He loved working. Tata, I'm, I'm going to snitch on you real quick. When, when he was younger, he, he, he would buy boxes of chocolates, and he would go with me to, to my college. And he would say, oh, you know, you guys want to buy chocolates from my ba basketball team. But he still wasn't on the basketball team. <laughs> he, he just wanted to get up and do something every day. You know, after school, he would come with me at night, and he would just hustle. He would hustle. He was a hustler. He, he was driven, you know. He would, when we worked together at the pharmacy, he would take his bicycle and he would pack, you know, all of our elderly patients' medicine who lived in Marble Hill, who lived in Fordham, who lived in the Heights, and he would deliver their, he would take his big book bag, he would take his bicycle, and he would take them their medicine to their home. It was amazing. Just, this kid was just out of this world. My brother was dedication. He was the definition of integrity. He was joy. My brother could, could light up this whole church. When he, he, when he walked into a room, he could light up the whole church. When he was like 10, he was around the age of 10, he was stripped down to his tidy whities <laughs> Stripped down to his tidy whities and danced the maraca for all of us. Yo, tell me y'all remember that. He would dance that maraca like crazy and make us laugh. And, oh, my God, he brought us so, so, so much joy, so much joy. Everyone keeps telling me that I'm strong, that I'm strong, and that my brother's giving me strength. But that, that ain't it. I can't, I can't really put it into words how broken I am, how broken my mother is, how broken my father is, how empty we feel. I can't put it into words. I still wake up. You know, I've been waking up to nightmares from the night he was killed. I can't put it into words how shattered my family is. But, but. The amount of strength that, we're, that we get from knowing that my brother was called by God to do something. God put something in my brother's heart. He put something in my brother's heart. My brother had a lot of fears. My brother was afraid of heights. He was afraid of rats. He was afraid of dogs. He was afraid of dogs, but he wasn't afraid to die to wear that uniform. He was not afraid to die. No, no matter how broken we are, how empty we feel, we get, we get strength from knowing that my brother had a bur that God put a burning desire in my brother's heart. And he called them to do something. And we are so proud of him for saying yes. We are so proud of my brother. When I think of my brother, I just feel so much pride. So, so much pride. And because, because he said yes, because he said yes to God, my family and I, we are confident that my brother's next to God. We're confident that my brother's next to God, protecting us, protecting his NYPD family. Tata, we're proud of you. We are 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 proud of you. We love you. <laughs> Please always protect us. Your big brother's very, very proud of you. <laughs> Mommy's proud of you. Papi's proud of you. Dominic is proud of you. We love you. Thank you so much. I love you forever, bro. Thank you. Please protect us always.
I now like to invite Jason's wife, Dominique, to please come and speak to us. I would say good morning to you all, but in fact, it's the worst morning ever. <laughs> I can't believe I'm standing in front of thousands of people in the cathedral we plan to visit later this year. All of this seems so unreal, like I'm having one of those nightmares that you never thought you'd had. Friday morning, we were together eating breakfast and drinking some Starbucks. Eating was probably our favorite hobby. Maybe that's why we gained those extra pounds. Friday morning began just like every other morning before work. You were always my big spoon, watching Netflix, YouTube law enforcement shorts, read me your emails, and wait for your mom to come home. You packed your book bag because we had to leave before two, and really, before two sharp, because of your ICO sergeant. You would drive me home and say goodbye with three kisses all the time and texted me when you were 84. That was our routine. At around 1500, 1515, I received a BRB roll call text. And through our day, you told me about your jobs till it was EOT. This Friday was different. We had an argument. You know, it's hard being a cop wife sometimes. It's hard being patient when plans were canceled or we would go days without seeing each other or when you had to write a report that would take forever because you had to vouch for so many things. So you did OT. Or when you had a bad day at work because an EDB drove you nuts. But you always reminded me that it was going to be all right. We were going to get through it. This Friday we were arguing because I didn't want you to use your job phone while we were together, you were so mad that you took Le your LeBron jersey down, gave me your chain, and put the lotions I gave you for your ashy hands in the bag and said, here, take them. We left your apartment, and because I didn't want to continue to argue, I ordered an Uber. You asked me if you are sure that you don't want me to take you home, it might be the last ride I give you. I said no, and that was probably the biggest mistake I ever made. Later that day, I received the call. I wish none of you that are sitting here with me will ever receive. I had gotten a notification from the Citizen app, which was my central. 
and I saw that two police officers were shot in Harlem. My heart dropped. I immediately texted you and asked you, are you okay? Please tell me you're okay. I know that you're mad right now, but just text me you're okay. At least tell me you're busy. I get no response. We used to share locations on find my iPhone, and when I check yours, I see that you're at Harlem Hospital. I thought maybe you were sitting on a perp, but still, nothing. I called, and then called again, and then called one more time, and this time I felt something wasn't right. I messaged P.O. David and Joe because I knew they were your friends from the 3-2, and I get no response. Then I get a call asking if I'm Jason's wife, and then I had to rush to the hospital. Walking up those steps, seeing everybody staring at me was the scariest moment I've experienced. Nobody was telling me anything. Thousands of people were surrounding me, and yet I felt alone. I couldn't believe you left me. Seeing you in a hospital bed wrapped up in sheets, not hearing you when I was talking to you, broke me. I asked why. I said to you, wake up, baby. I'm here. The little bit of hope I had that you would come back to life just to say goodbye or say I love you one more time had left. I was lost. I'm still lost. Today I'm still in this nightmare that I wish I never had. Full of rage and anger, hurt and sad, torn. Although I gained thousands of blue brothers and sisters, I'm the loneliest without you. I know you're looking at me and beside me telling me I could do this, and I'm trying. Trust me, I am. But I didn't prepare for this. None of us did. Jason and I met in elementary school, Amistad, all the way up to eighth grade. We had the time of our lives. He was part of the cool kids crew. There was never a dull moment or with him around. He was the class clown, got me in trouble a couple of times, had our teachers sit us away from each other because we couldn't focus. And we never thought that our innocent childhood love would lead us to marriage. Even when we said I do, we couldn't believe we said it. October 9th was the happiest day of our lives. I know I drove you crazy saying I love you so many times that you would stop replying I love you more. But you made me feel alive. You make me feel alive. And Jason is so happy right now that all of you are here. Through pain and sorrow, this is exactly how he would have wanted to be remembered. Like a true hero or like I used to call him, Big P.O. Rivera. You have the whole nation on gridlock. And although you won't be here anymore, I want you to live through me. The system continues to fail us. We are not safe anymore. 
not even the members of the service. I know you were tired of these laws, especially the ones from the new DA. I hope he's watching you speak through me right now. I'm sure all of our blue family is tired too. But I promise, we promise, that your death won't be in vain. I love you to the end of time. We'll take the watch from here. I'd invite all members of the service to fall out and form up outside. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave Brother Jason. <clears throat> Might this farewell express our love for him? Might it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope? One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
To you, O oh Lord, we commend the soul of Jason, your servant. In the sight of this world, he may appear dead, but in your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your mercy, grant him everlasting peace through Christ. In peace, we take our brother Jason to his place of rest. Please join in singing God Bless America. I invite you to join in singing the second of our recessional hymns, O God, our help in ages past. Yeah. 